It's hard to believe that it's been nearly four years since Volkswagen first introduced the brand's first fully dedicated EV to America, the ID4, back in late 2020. In that time period, this vehicle has grown to become one of the best-selling EVs worldwide. Now, for 2024, the company is giving the ID4 its first round of updates in the form of new electric motors and an all-new infotainment system with their latest software. So today, we're actually out here in Pasadena, California, to finally get behind the wheel of the US spec ID4 and the big question I went answered. For those of you who are looking for a mainstream electric SUV that isn't a Tesla. How does the revised 2024 ID4 continue to stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So before we start talking about some of the exterior styling changes, which I'll be frank with you, there are basically none, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on underneath the hood because if you guys remember my previous reviews on the ID4, you'll remember that this vehicle sadly does not have a frunk. Obviously what you can see here is just the usual internals for the electric motors, for the fluid refills and some wiring of course. But what you're looking at here is a brand new electric motor. Now the one that I'm showing you here is the company's all wheel drive version. If you guys remember the all wheel drive version was almost a year delayed compared to the rear drive model, but it has a new electric motor on the rear. And when you go for the all wheel drive model it also has a new electric motor at the front. This vehicle now makes a combined total of 335 horsepower. So that's a pretty big increase around 40 more horsepower versus the 2023 model. And then VW says torque also got a substantial boost. The rear electric motor makes 420 or 402 pound-feet of torque. The front electric motor makes 99 pound-feet of torque. The company says that you technically aren't supposed to be combining the two because if you did, you'd have almost five or a little over 500 pound-feet of torque. The company is not quoting a combined torque figure. But again, this power figure is um, a healthy 40 more versus the 2023 model. And then torque is roughly double the output of, or almost double the output of the previous 2023 version. The rear drive version, however, now makes 282 horsepower. That is a healthy 81 more versus the prior generation. You guys remember my complaints of the old ID4, this, the rear drive model was very sluggish. So VW has clearly fixed that. Uh, it all goes out through a one speed reduction gear transmission. Uh, and this vehicle continues to use an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. About 77 is usable. The battery is actually the same versus 2023. You can still take the smaller 62 kilowatt hour battery pack here in America, which Volkswagen kept uh, in order to preserve the lower price point of this vehicle. The smaller battery pack, however, will continue to make do with around 201 horsepower. This model here with its 335 horsepower should do zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. That's what VW says. That's almost a second improvement versus the 2023 version. So now this is now much quicker versus the uh, old model. Uh, in terms of the towing capacity, this can also tow a maximum of 2,700 pounds. It should have a top speed of around 112, 115 miles an hour, uh, depending on which powertrain you, of course, you have. And then in terms of the curb weight, we don't have the final curb weight figures, but VW says the new electric motors are more efficient which allows it to also get better range. So this model here is now rated at 263 miles of range versus 255. The rear drive version, however, can now do up to 291 miles away of range. So VW is inching closer to that 300 mile mark. This car as it sits should come in at just under 5,000 pounds. The rear drive model will be around 200 pounds lighter. But let's go ahead and close up this hood, which I kind of wish that VW gave this thing an actual strut as opposed to a prop rod. Now this exterior color is called Aurora Red Metallic. It's uh, technically an upcharge if you guys want red. And in terms of the front fascia, this is where I usually talk about some of the styling updates, but clearly VW didn't do anything to this car. In fact, the one that I'm showing you is kind of like the one trim bef before the top trim. It's known as a Pro uh, S with all wheel drive, and it does include some upgrades. So you can see the headlights. These are uh, the IQ light full LED headlights, which are adaptive. You have the a LED daytime running light and turn signal. The uh, Pro S trim includes the LED light bar along with the illuminated Volkswagen logo. Now, if you guys go for the Pro S Plus, you also get some upgraded silver trim along the front fascia. You can see on this Pro S, it doesn't include that. You have kind of like these interesting diamonds in the actual grille insert here that allows for some cooling uh, that passes through. Obviously, there's no grille here because it's a fully electric vehicle. No fog lights, but this car does have some all weather lights that improve your visibility when you're driving in bad uh, rainy conditions. There are some functional vents here that allows for an air curtain to pass through, all for, of course, aerodynamics. This is an EV. But overall, this car, for me personally, I always thought the ID4 kind of looks like a minivan. So this is kind of a missed opportunity for, v for VW. I was hoping the company would have given this car some styling updates, perhaps make it look a little bit more aggressive like the ID5 GTX that they offer in Europe. But as you can see, sadly, until we get the plus trim with its new wheels, this practically looks identical to a 2023 model year. Now moving around the side profile, you can see this 
this is a compact SUV. It's built off of Volkswagen's MEB architecture. It's a dedicated electric platform. It has a wheelbase of just shy of 109 inches. It has an overall length of 180.5 inches long. If you guys know uh, the Audi portfolio, you'll know that the Q4 e-tron is essentially this car's platform mate. The Audi is about an inch longer, but technically the Audi has the older powertrains here in the US, which Audi I'm assuming will add for 2025. You can see the wheels. These are a carryover 20 inch wheel from the 2023 model. They're riding on a 235 by 50 uh, R20 inch tire. It's a Pirelli uh, all season P0 tire. You have a 13.4 inch disc rotor in the front, an 11 inch drum at the back. That's right, the ID4 is one of the few vehicles that still uses a drum brake and you still get that drum brake on the Audi Q4, which is just insulting to me, but hey, it's an EV. A lot of its braking is gonna come from the regen braking and from the front braking. You have an all independent suspension. The all wheel drive model has roughly around an extra half an inch of ground clearance, but still at just under seven inches, you're not gonna be going off-roading in your ID4. Obviously you have some unpainted wheel arch moldings here, along with the side panel or the side skirts underneath there. You can tell this is an all-wheel drive model by this subtle little badge here that says all-wheel drive. The rear drive model will just say Pro S or Pro S Plus without the all-wheel drive badge. Uh, the mirrors are also uh, uh, have an integrated turn signal, but they're not power folding. The plus trim will include the power folding mirrors. This trim, however, does include the panoramic glass roof. Sadly, this roof does not open to vent air, but it does have a power retractable shade along with this slim aerodynamic uh, roof rail profile. You can see there's no chrome on the vehicle. I like the fact that VW kind of used just blacked out trim. And then at the rear of the car, it looks identical. Again, there are no styling changes back here, but overall you can see the typical EV design cues here with the full LED light blade. You have an LED uh, turn signal, LED tail light. You have the illuminated Volkswagen logo here, which is nice. Unlike some competitors, VW is still including a rear window wiper, which is nice. You have this kind of nicely integrated rear spoiler. And then down here, you can see there are some uh, flushly integrated parking sensors. You have a little tow hitch over there, which is a very small, that looks like almost like an inch or one and a half inch receiver. That's a lot smaller than what I'm used to seeing for these tow hitches. Uh, and then in terms of the cargo area, uh, you can see Cargo space is pretty class competitive. You're looking at just over 30 cubic feet of total storage space. If you look underneath here, you can see there's a little bit of underfloor storage and this car also includes another storage well right here. So that's kind of nice um, considering this car doesn't have a frunk. It's good to have that additional storage. If you fold down that seat, VW says it'll increase the space to around 61 cubic feet of space. So again, very class competitive, but you might find a little bit more from something like the Tesla Model Y, which is technically a little bit larger still on the outside versus the ID4. So I must forgot to mention the charge port door. VW actually puts it here on the rear passenger quarter panel. It's just a manual door. When you open that up, it almost looks like a fuel filler door, but you can see this model being a 2024 still uses the older J1772 plug with the CCS combo port. I say older because VW will eventually adopt the NAC plug. That's pretty much what every other brand is gonna adopt. That's remember the Tesla plug. And this vehicle in terms of charging, because the battery is the same, still at 82 kilowatts, 77 usable, can do around 263 miles of range up from 255. If you guys can find a DC fast charger, this will accept up to 170 kilowatts, which means you can go from 10 to 80% in around 30-ish minutes, which is average charging times. If you guys are looking at an Ionic 5 or EV6, it's going to charge at roughly twice the speed of this vehicle. It has an onboard charger of around 10.9 uh, kilowatts. So on a level two at home, on a 48 amp, you should be able to charge this up in right, just under 10 hours, which again is pretty average stuff, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing when Volkswagen finally adopts the NAC plug and then eventually increasing their charging speed. They do have that platform, of course, that they'll be introducing on Audis at a later date, but we don't know, of course, when VW is gonna adopt that. So on the outside, unless you're looking at a plus trim with the new 21 inch wheels, it's gonna look identical to a 23, 2023 model. But what about the interior? This is where VW has clearly made some changes, but it's gonna take a keen eye to notice them. Before I touch base on that, uh, those changes, let me first talk about the door panel of this vehicle. Now, first of all, you can see the upper door panel here has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's some silver trim here, some piano black plastic trim. It's a nice padded area. This right here is the Galaxy interior, which is technically like a combination of a black and like a very dark gray. This is the faux leatherette VTEC leather interior. Then you can see the door panel or the window controls. You still only have two window switches here. So one control is going to control, or basically these control either the two front windows or all four windows. There's a little rear button here that you have to push to allow the system to access the rear windows. If you push and hold the rear button here and it blinks, it'll allow you to control all four windows. But again, it's just an extra step, extra step and takes a little bit getting used to. If you're an owner, that shouldn't be necessarily a big deal. But getting inside this vehicle, it has 
a pretty easy SUV step in height, although it's not, again, only just under seven inches of ground clearance. It's not gonna be as good as some other competing electric SUVs, which have more. If I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built off of a dedicated EV architecture. Now, when you get into the vehicle, VW doesn't include a start stop button that you have to press. Although there is one here for just redundancy. Uh, you don't really need to because once I get into the car and I have the key fob on me, you can see this is the newer Volkswagen key. Uh, this was first introduced, of course, on the ID4. I love the design of the key. It feels very heavy and substantial. It has your usual lock, unlock, uh, remote start or uh, remote trunk open, and then a panic function. There's no remote start on the fob, but if you have access to the Volkswagen CarNet app on your smartphone, you should be able to remote start the vehicle. So when you want to get in, you basically just put your foot on the brake, and that will turn the car on. Again, you don't need to push that start stop button. It's there in case it doesn't work, but. It's kind of nice, again, Volkswagen kind of took a little page out of Tesla's book there that kind of gave you that nice seamless integration. Now, in terms of the rest of the interior, you can see it looks practically identical. However, the center screen here is now 12.3 inches or 12.9 inches. So it's almost an inch larger versus the old 2023 model. Now, if you guys go for the base model with the smaller 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, you'll still have the 12 inch display. Volkswagen got rid of the 10 inch display, which was the base system a few years ago. But this system here, while it is around three or two inches smaller than the new ID7, it is again running the Volkswagen's Volkswagen's latest software. So you can see my phone is connected via wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I love how big the graphics look. The icons are nice and easily read, readable. You can see push that button here. It goes into the home display. You can see uh, in terms of the actual home display, um, the resolution has been improved. The speed and everything else is definitely a lot faster. You can see there's the built-in GPS. All ID4s actually come standard with the company's built-in embedded GPS with route planning. So now if you're inputting a destination, this vehicle will essentially you know, route you there and it'll also route you to the chargers along the way and it'll tell you how long you need to stop and charge. That's exactly what Tesla does. So it's nice that VW is now including that, of course, in the ID4. There's what the home screen looks like. If you push the uh, little icon, the car icon here, you can see there are a couple of little shortcut menus. If you push that, it takes you to all the different widgets. You can also adjust the ambient lighting in this vehicle. So if I want, I can also change the background to be a red color, to be a yellow color as well. There's also a uh, like a teal or an orange. Uh, my favorite is probably either the blue or the red. You can also go into a custom or an automatic setting. This 30 color ambient lighting is included if you guys go for this plus trim, which again is a couple thousand dollars extra versus the base uh, model. Uh, going to here, you can see your drive mode selector is now in the screen. There used to be an actual button, I believe here on the dash, but it's now in the screen. You can see there are five different drive modes, including a new traction mode, which I guess is kind of like an off-road setting. It's probably just all software that allows for additional wheel slippage. You can also go into a custom setting here. We'll try out the different drive modes later on in the driving scene. Your seat controls here. Uh, you can see it's a heated and ventilated seat. The ventilated seats are actually standard even on the base trim as long as you paid five grand extra for the bigger battery pack. So the smaller 62 kilowatt hour battery pack I believe only has heated seats. We can see the seat controls are located in the actual screen uh, themselves. Three levels, VW lets you put on the heated and cooled seat function on at the same time. You can see the climate screen brings up all your you know, climate options here. You have dual zone climate control. Uh, Tri-zone, I believe, is available if you guys go for the plus trim. You can see there are also some smart functions here. There's a built-in ionizer, which is definitely a nice touch. You have a heated steering wheel as well, uh, which you can turn on from the screen here in three different levels, or you can also control it via the steering wheel controls here. And now you can see the steering wheel itself it's practically the same. It has a flat bottom design. It has a manual tilt and telescoping arrangement, which is nice. You have a 5.3 inch instrument panel here, instrument cluster, which is good for those of you who prefer to have your speed right behind the steering wheel. Uh, however, I don't like the fact that you still have these touch capacitive buttons. Now, VW did add haptic feedback, I believe, in recent years. So if I touch like the volume knob here, you can see it actually provides feedback to acknowledge that I touched it but it's really easy to accidentally hit the heated steering wheel controls when you're turning the wheel, which again is a flaw. Uh, VW goes around that flaw by giving you actual hard buttons on other models in other markets. But as you can see here in the US, they don't do that. Uh, you have a new turn signal stock here along with a wiper control that's integrated into one stock. And they did that because now the gear selector has moved. So it used to be up here. Now it's down here. It's still like a little thing that you twist. So if I go back, twist it toward me, that puts it into reverse. You can see there's your backup camera with parking sensors. You can and get a 360 surround camera if you guys go for the plus trim. Again, that's an extra 3,000 bucks. Put push it forward to go into drive. So the camera quality and resolution is great. Um, you can also pull up different views and sensors and whatnot. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to getting a plus trim with the full 360 camera to show you guys what that looks like at a later date. Going back to the home display here, you can see that little button there takes you right back to the uh, Apple CarPlay function. And overall, this system is just really easy to use. It's quick and snappy. And VW also wanted me to remind you guys, these touch sensitive controls here, they're finally backlit. So if you guys remember before, these weren't backlit at night, so you couldn't really see them. Now you can see that these controls are now lit, although I'll have to wait until I get one at, you know, at front home where I can show you the vehicle at night. Unlike the ID7, however, the, rear, the, the vents here are not electronic. So in the ID7, you actually control the flow of the air from the screen. I like how VW kept it traditional in this vehicle here. You can see the center console is new that they introduced back in 2023, where you have repositioning for the cup holders, uh, a lot of piano black plastic trim, which I don't love. You can see it shows scratches and fingerprints easily. You can see there are two USB-C charging ports here. You have a nice wireless phone charging pad here, which actually fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it also reliably charges it really nicely, even with my case on it, which is great. You have a padded center console here, and if I open that up, you can see it's also very deep. No additional uh, USBs in there or power outlets. The USBs are gonna be located up here. But as you can see, it's very practical. The seats, they adjust in 12 different ways for both front seats, and they also include a massaging function. The massage function is actually when you guys go for this plus trim, there's a little button on the seat. It basically just turns the lumbar massage on. It kind of just focuses on this area of your back, which is fine. It's not as nice as some of the luxury brands, but it's nice that VW gives you that. The heat and cooled function, again, is standard on the upper trims or in the, six, the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack trim. You have also a two person memory here on the driver's side, which is a nice touch. Above me, you can see the big panoramic glass roof. Uh, doesn't open up to vent air, but you can see it's massive. There's not even like a bar here that breaks up the two you know, front and the rear portions together. You also have a retractable shade if you guys prefer to not have the sun beating down on you. That's something that you can't get, for example, on the Mustang Mach-E. I just wish that VW allowed you to vent it open to allow for air to vent in. You have some LED map lighting in here. And then looking at the glove compartment here, you can see it's uh, damped, but not lined with felt. It's a pretty good size. And then the rest of the materials here, you can see you've got some silver painted plastic, some uh, fake stitching here, but it's all soft touch injection molded plastic. No head up display, obviously. And then my tester is also lacking the Harman Kardon stereo. It just has the Volkswagen sound system. It sounds okay, but if you're an audiophile, again, I strongly recommend going for the plus trim, but overall the interior is familiar, but the big improvement here is this screen. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting one for a week where I can spend a week with this system and see just how much it's improved uh, when you guys live with it for a little bit longer. Now, moving into the back seat of the 2024 ID4, just like the 2023 model, this has a bigger back seat in the segment, and that's one of the reasons why the ID4 has been so successful. The one thing I want to show you guys, however, the seat does not recline. Some competitors do offer that function that allows you to recline the seat. You can obviously fold it down to increase the cargo capacity. It creates a nearly flat load floor, uh, but overall, I do wish that VW would have given us the ability to recline the seat. But once I get back here, you can see the space is definitely very nice. Now, Getting back here and closing the door, this is essentially where I'd have the seat to drive in my driving position. Material quality back here, however, is hard touch plastic. So it's not quite as nice as the front area, but it has some nice graining to the plastics. You have silver painted plastic door handles here. Obviously you have padded area here with the VTEX leather stitching, the faux leather, you have some piano black plastic trim. Uh, and then in terms of the car or the floor space here, you can see completely flat floor. VW says there's 37.6 inches of leg room, which again puts it toward uh, the higher end of the segment, which is nice. You have rear seat air vents. You have two storage pockets. There's also a nice little storage pocket here at the upper portion of the seat that allows you to basically put your smartphone in there, which is good. Uh, you have USB ports down here. And then you can see there's a big open area because I believe on the plus trims, you'll get a separate tri-zone climate control system. You can see on this trim, it doesn't have that obviously. Uh, looking over here, you can see there's an armrest that folds down, gives you two cup holders. You can also kind of pull that open and it kind of creates a little center pass through, which is definitely uh, a nice touch. And then above me here, you can see the glass roof comes all the way into the rear seat. In terms of headroom space, I'm five foot seven. If I sit back, you can see the headroom does get a little bit tight. So if you're over six feet, you might find that your head uh, or your hair gets close to hitting the ceiling. So here we are behind the wheel of the revised 2024 Volkswagen ID4. While the outside pretty much looks the same, this rear drive model gets a brand new electric motor that has around 80 more horsepower than the previous 2023 model. So that's a significant jump. And I wanna see really quick what we can get zero to 60 wise. VW didn't quote a zero to 60 time, but with nearly 300 horsepower in rear wheel drive, it should be significantly faster than the outgoing generation. Putting my foot down here and 
trying to see if we can get to 60 in 5.6 seconds. 5.6 seconds. I guys, you guys need to take that number seriously because the old model with its uh, 201 horsepower took around two seconds longer, around 7.5 seconds. So that is a significant jump in power thanks to, again, an extra 80 horsepower. If you guys remember, the last all-wheel drive ID4 that I tested with its 295 ponies did it in 5.8 seconds. So now, that time, I, I did it with a slight downhill, um, so it's not quite as accurate as if I had this car or if I was driving this car back home on my usual testing service, but I'm gonna see if we can try doing it one more time because that is a very impressive time considering this is the base powertrain. I mean, if you guys look at the segment as a whole, the rear drive models typically have in the low 200 horsepower range, which is technically what the old ID4 had as well, but uh, this new motor uh, really improves things significantly. It's one of the reasons why I'm super excited to drive the all new ID7 because the ID7 basically has this powertrain again, the all wheel drive version version will have 330 horsepower so not quite as big of a jump in power when you guys go from you know the rear drive to the all-wheel drive version now but I think that for most people you're going to find this pretty impressive the rest of the driving dynamics for the ID4 is also still very nice this is still one of the better driving SUVs out there because it has a very nice ride quality it's really easy to drive this thing very comfortably and smoothly. It doesn't have too much power and it also has a very linear setup to the way the power is delivered. VW wanted this car to essentially feel like an internal combustion gas car uh, most of the times. Although again, it's fully electric, but the way the car accelerates, the way it feels, it's all very linear. And I think that's super important when people are looking uh, in this segment of vehicle because Volkswagen says they designed the ID4 to essentially appeal to you know consumers who are going into their first electric vehicle. And that's kind of why the ID4 isn't necessarily like the GTI of SUVs out there. I would love to see it be more like a GTI SUV. Uh, but again, I think that VW did a fantastic job with making this thing just very approachable, easy to drive. It doesn't have that kind of whiplash acceleration that a lot of other EVs give you. Man, this thing really does accelerate hard. 5.8 seconds there. So again, that's on a pretty level surface. So it really shows you just how impressively quick the base powertrain is on the ID4. And I'm really looking forward to testing this vehicle out with the all wheel drive powertrain. I suspect it's probably gonna be in the low five second, maybe just a smidge under four, under five seconds. Uh, but again, zero to 60 times aren't necessarily everything when you're looking at an electric vehicle, but they are something that's super fun to test out again. So put my foot down here. The rear drive model definitely now has enough power to step the back end out a little bit easier. The old one with only 201 horsepower, it would let you do it sort of, but really if you had to like turn off the traction control, you had to be on like a slippery or surface, this new one definitely <laughs> accelerates with much more authority. This kind of reminds me a lot of what Polestar and Volvo did with their you know, newer electric vehicles like the XC40 or the Polestar 2. The rear drive versions have almost 300 horsepower. The Volkswagen kind of did the same thing here and I, I'm living, I'm, I'm loving it. It's, it's basically the power upgrade this car needed. Now on a full charge, I started out this review with around 99% charge. It was showing just under 270 miles of range. Now 270 miles isn't necessarily the 291 that this car is rated at. I'll have to do a range test when I get this car back home to test for a full week but uh, it is, again, improving the ID4's numbers. If you guys are looking at a rear, an all-wheel drive version, that improves to 263 versus this 291. And I think that uh, that number is probably uh, gonna be uh, good enough for most people. Obviously, it's not class leading. This car should still accept up to 170 kilowatts of max DC fast charging, uh, which means 10 to 80% in roughly 30 minutes. Remember, we have an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, 77 of which is usable. Now, in terms of the rest of the driving, uh, you know, experience, the drive mode selector is in the screen over here. So I had it in sport the whole time there. I'll switch it over to comfort. In comfort mode, you really notice that this car, I don't wanna say changes too much. The suspension isn't adaptive, uh, but I definitely notice the throttle isn't quite as touchy as before. Uh, it's almost like the car is kind of tailoring things back. It's kind of like the way Hyundai and Kia will make their vehicles feel a little bit slower when you take it out of the sport mode. But this is the comfortable driving, you know, scenario that most people are gonna be experiencing in their ID4. 
And I think that uh, for the majority, people are gonna be driving it in that comfort mode, obviously. For quickest acceleration, you want it to be in sport. This car does have uh, a B mode in the transmission. So the new transmission selector used to be here. Now it's down here. I think this is a better location, but now we have you know a single stock for the wipers and for the turn singles, which again, it kind of simplifies things. VW doesn't offer a true one pedal drive feature. That's something that Volkswagen, Audi, and Porsche don't really do. But in B mode, it does provide some regen braking, but again, not a true one pedal drive. VW just doesn't believe in that. Uh, but again, uh, this car has excellent visibility. You can see out of the front, the side really well. It has a really tight turning radius, actually 20 inch wheels, but this thing still turns on a dime and then put your foot down. It really feels good. This is exactly the perfect amount of power. I think that a base powertrain should have. And I think VW did a great job. I mean, obviously if you guys need all wheel drive grip, you're going to you know, enjoy an extra 50 horsepower. Uh, it's about a 35 horsepower bump from the previous generation, which I'm hoping I can get one, an all wheel drive model to drive at a later date, along with doing a range test on this vehicle. The seats are also extremely comfortable. It's nice and quiet in here. Uh, and then we're sitting here driving around downtown or Pasadena area and here in California. This is kind of where an electric vehicle shines. You have a ton of stop and go traffic. This is where the car's regen braking uh, will put some energy back into the battery. And it also makes driving and traffic a little bit less annoying because the car does slow down on its own. And you can also feel good about the fact that you're not burning gas, you're just burning electrons and you know, you're still able to recoup some energy back into the battery whenever you, you know, come to a stop. But for those of you who you know, are considering an ID4, you wanted to wait for the 2024 model and you don't need the all wheel drive grip. I'm happy to say that it was probably worth the wait considering the fact that this car got a big power upgrade. The range isn't, isn't a huge upgrade in terms of just on paper, but I think most people should be pretty satisfied with this base powertrain considering it has almost 300 horsepower. So as luck would have it, I actually managed to get a chance to snag an all wheel drive version. Remember this car has 335 horsepower. So actually five more than what Volkswagen initially told us. And this car also has almost 500 foot pounds of torque, which is insane to think this car got such a huge power upgrade. Volkswagen says it'll do zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. We tested 5.8 in the rear drive model yesterday. So let's go ahead and see what we can get in this all wheel drive model today. It's in sport mode. Uh, we have almost a full charge definitely feels a lot faster now. There's just a sense of urgency that the old model was lacking. Okay, 5.4 seconds there. So now that's with it more going slightly uphill. Um, VW again says 4.9, which tends to be on the conservative side. Um, so I wanna see if we can get something similar again. I'll just try another run here. This time we'll try brake torquing it. Oh, brake torquing it doesn't like that. Don't brake torque it, it doesn't like that. <laughs> we'll turn around and we'll see if we can do another run just because I really am confident this car could probably break into the uh, five second mark or the 4.9 second mark, just like what Volkswagen is claiming. This car definitely feels like it has a lot more power than the previous generation, which again is gonna help people who are you know looking at this particular class of vehicle because everything in this segment is just insanely fast. So we'll come to a stop again. We'll put our foot down. <laughs> this thing definitely has the speed that rivals something like the Ionic 5. Um, so there we got 5.3 seconds. Now again, it's not quite as fast as VW's claim, but it is it going to be almost as quick, or it's, it's about a half a second faster than the old all-wheel drive model. And once I have this car for a full week back home to test, I'll retest it and see if we can get into that you know under five second mark. But overall, you know, I think for most people, the all-wheel drive version is probably going to be the one you're gonna get. VW's actually told us that the take rate is around a 60-40 take rate. So uh, about 60% of customers chose the all-wheel drive ID4, about 40% chose the rear drive. That number sounds about right. I mean, although the old rear drive model was just so slow, I would have said, skip it, go for the all-wheel drive model. But remember, the all-wheel drive comes in an extra $4,000 extra versus the rear drive model. So you really wanna have, you're really gonna want to need the, the extra traction because the rear drive model now, I think, is it's gonna be fast enough for most people. Also remember the range is gonna be slightly less. Now we started out with this video on a full charge. It was showing around 272 miles of range, which is actually about 10 miles higher than what the EPA rates this car at. The all wheel drive or the rear drive version yesterday uh, was also showing around 278 miles of range. So um, I'll do a range test once I get one back home. I mean, although right here in California, the weather conditions are kind of ideal, uh, but overall in terms of the rest of the driving dynamics, this car basically feels almost identical to uh, the rear drive version. 
it just kind of, again, gives you that extra traction from the front motor and gives you the extra speed. But in terms of the ride quality, it's pretty similar. This model here, however, is still the S, uh, the Pro S, which means it doesn't have the bigger 21 inch wheels, which are new. VW says they should have the Pro S Plus models with the new 21 inch wheels at a later date. Uh, and that bigger wheel will likely affect the ride quality because this car, remember, it has an independent suspension, but no adaptive dampers. That's something that you can get on the upcoming ID7. So although the ID4 was off to a somewhat slow sales start when this car was first introduced in late 2020, VW actually had its best sales year ever in America last year with the company moving just shy of 38,000 units here in the States for 2023. Now that number basically means that the ID4 is number four in the sales race for fully electric premium long range SUVs. Obviously the Tesla Model Y is number one. The Chevrolet Bolt, uh, the Bolt and the Bolt EV is number two, followed by the Ford Mustang Mach-E, which did around 40,000 units, but still 38,000 thousand units basically is a pretty healthy number and it really shows that the segment continues to grow even though EV sales and demand are dwindling uh, these types of vehicles are getting more popular as people realize that they do start to fit your lifestyle and after spending some time driving the 2024 ID4 the biggest improvement here for me is obviously in the electric motors even though the battery pack is the same although the company did improve range zero to 60 performance for the rear drive model improved tremendously two seconds faster zero to 60 makes this among the quickest EVs for a base power train and then the all-wheel drive model we got 5.3 as our best time i'm hoping i can do better when i get one for a full week back home in terms of the infotainment system this is also where volkswagen made some critical improvements love the new software love the big almost 13 inch display uh, the seats are also very comfortable. This vehicle has a roomy interior. Uh, I, I do kind of wish that Volkswagen would have got rid of the touch sensitive buttons that you have on the steering wheel. In Europe, they actually use traditional buttons. So I was kind of hoping the company would do that, but obviously those are some small quibbles, but this vehicle still has one of the biggest back seats, a usable trunk area, and it's not sporty to drive like a GTI, but it now has acceleration that's going to, again, keep pace with all of its rivals out there. Now, if you're looking to put your, or put one of these in your driveway, if you guys have been waiting for the 2024 models, these are heading to dealership in about a couple weeks. You're gonna to have to wait until the first or second week of March to get your hands on this car. And pricing has pretty much held steady with the 2023 model. I think VW says they increased the price by about 800 bucks. Basically for a base version with rear wheel drive, it'll start at just under 40 grand. So 39,875 at around $5,000 if you guys want the bigger battery pack. So it's nice that VW still offers the smaller battery pack, but remember you'll have only 201 horsepower with that model and just over 200 miles of range. So five grand is kind of worth it if you guys want uh, to have almost 300 miles of range and again, 81 more horsepower. If you guys want all-wheel drive, it's an extra $4,000 extra. So if you guys want an all-wheel drive ID4, it's about $9,000 more because it includes the bigger battery pack. Going to the Pro S trim that I'm showing you here are gonna include those upgrades like the LED lighting that I showed you guys, uh, the uh, better uh, interior with the upgraded uh, seats, of course. If you guys go for the bigger battery pack, it has that ventilated seat, which is standard now, which is definitely a nice touch. My test car here, this Pro S with all-wheel drive with the Aurora Red and the 1425 destination charge comes into around 55,625. That's about the same price as the Plus trim that I tested in 2023. The Plus now is gonna be around 58.5 fully loaded with everything. So obviously it's gotten more expensive at the top end, but this vehicle is still one of the few EVs that are new for 2024 as of this filming that still qualifies for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. As you guys know, every year the benchmark kind of gets more difficult and a lot of EVs have fallen off the list. For example, if you're looking at a Chevrolet Blazer EV that doesn't qualify for the EV tax credit, but this Volkswagen does because remember the company moved production to Chattanooga uh, about almost two years ago. And in terms of the minerals, it still has uh, enough minerals that still allow it to qualify for the uh, full $75 federal tax credit because of the free trade agreement that, of course, the U.S. has with some of these countries. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2024 Volkswagen ID4. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And I'd also like to thank Rob from behind the camera, who's always working very hard to edit and shoot these videos for you guys. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.